seating. I was sitting back there. Were you standing the whole time? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> well, God went to the cross, right? So if he could go to the cross and suffer for all those hours on the cross, I guess we can suffer standing. <laughs> That's why I don't like to be tucked behind the altar. I never know what's going on. So I apologize, but uh, uh, now you can rest. Um, Mary Beth. Praise God. I'm going to move over here because I'm going to knock something over. And we're all going to laugh. And we're all, you know, we're here to laugh. But that's what we're here to do. We're here to praise God, to worship him, to celebrate who he is in our lives. So Merry Christmas to all of you. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. So the great day is here, right? You've been shopping. You've been cleaning. You've been doing everything you need to do. I'm sure you went into the malls and... Uh, I stayed away from Smith Haven Mall as best I could. And you know, but there are malls all over Long Island that people have been shopping in. And because Christmas is a nagging deadline, it's, it's a gotta get it done day, isn't it? It's one of those things like birthdays, and it is the birthday of Jesus, but we just have to get it all done. And so you're here, you're trying to figure out what, the, uh, you know, your minds are somewhere else, I know. Um, but you've been shopping. And you've been on Amazon, and you've been Googling, and you've been trying to figure out what the latest fad is, the latest toys for your children, your grandchildren, whatever. You've been bucking the crowds, and, and just intent on getting everything done in the mall at one shot, right? Some of us don't want to keep going back, and you keep whipping out your credit card. Well, picture this. Picture this. You're in the mall, and all of a sudden, the, in the food court, uh, or the, the lobby, uh, it explodes in music. And some, uh, but it's not the humming of Silent Night, and it's not music that's on the airwaves um, and Feliz Navidad. It's not some Christmas card um, uh, mall. Um, but think about this. The shoppers, imagine the guy pushing the stroller is all of a sudden starting to speak, he's uh, sing in this bass voice. And he begins to sing louder and louder. Imagine the mall full of music. Well, you don't have to imagine, listen to this. Turn it up, all the way. Go for it, go.
Santiago. What a moment. For many, it was a glorious moment. Oh boy, don't you wish you had been there? To just, you know, just to hear that and experience that. It was a glorious moment. But for some people, if you looked around, they seemed a little detached or uh, uninterested or maybe a, a little annoyed, you know? They were just uh, wondering what was going on and they just really didn't really care much about it. However, for believers, for a wonderful moment, for one wonderful moment, shoppers became worshipers and mall, the mall became a sanctuary, a place of worshiping the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The common and the ordinary and the normal became extraordinary. It was the announcement of the reason for the season, the announcement for the reason for all the commotion in their lives, our lives, as they sang. <coughs> what happened in Macy's that day in that mall is small <coughs> potatoes and cannot compare to what happened in Bethlehem over 2,000 years ago. There, there, there were praises and the singers. There were the confused and the bewildered, the shepherds. They were there unaffected and the sleepy, the town of Bethlehem. Before the heavenly chorus rang out, it was a normal day in Bethlehem. It was a normal day with normal everyday occurrences, with normal activities. <coughs> just like those shoppers. Mary and Joseph showed up in Bethlehem. Not to great fanfare. They didn't have a parade of horses around them and announcing their coming into Bethlehem. They were just quietly coming there to do what was expected of them, to register. And they were looking for a place to sleep. Jesus arrived into the world Without Hollywood fanfare, without a big organ and a keyboards and choir singing, it was a quiet, sleepy night. He deserved the honor, of course. He deserved all the angels of heaven singing in one voice. But Jesus, the Son of God, the Holy of Holies, entered the world quietly, unobtrusively, in commonness. God placed himself in the most common and most normal and ordinary of circumstances. Yet it was no ordinary baby. It was the Son of God, born in a human way, born from the womb of an earthly woman, born into a working class family, Joseph, Jesus' earthly father, a carpenter, wondering how he could raise the Son of God, as Kenny sang so beautifully, wondering what was in God's plan. God cloaked himself in commonness so that we could know him. God comes to us in our common everyday life circumstances so we can know him. He comes to us in commonness, in the common of our lives to hold us, to heal us, to help us, to guide us. He comes to us in our problems, our uh, pains, our predicaments. He comes to us and he is with us. He is Emmanuel. God with us. That's the promise of scripture of this night. God with us, Emmanuel. He's not a, a, just a near God, and he's not just a somewhere out there God. He is not a, a zip code God. <coughs> he comes to all zip codes equally. God is with us. He is a with us God. 
For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And you shall call his name Emmanuel. You see, God broke through time and history and placed himself in a common, ordinary scene of that day. An animal stall laying in a manger, a feeding trough for animals. So don't think for a minute, don't think for a moment that you are too ordinary and that you're too common, that I'm too ordinary and I'm too common for God to be with you, to be with me, to be with us. He comes to you, he comes to me, he comes to us in our messy lives. That's the reality, we live in a broken world and Jesus came into this broken world to shed light, to spread the light of his love, his teachings, to share and spread the, the love and his grace and mercy. He comes to you and me in our <coughs> messes, in our messy lives, and he never turns his back on us. He never leaves us alone. His promise is that he is Emmanuel, God with us. So he is with you and me. He is with us in our messed up marriages, in our messed up family relationships, in our troubled personal lives. He's there in our messiness of alcohol abuse and drug abuse. He's there with us in our in our times when we're fighting because we're not getting along as, as family members and friends and relationships and husbands and wives. And what a mess we can make of our lives when you think about it. He is the one who is with us in the pain of loss, the loss of a loved one. A number of us have had losses in this past year that have been heart-wrenching. He's been with us in the pain of loss. He is with us when we're in the hospital. We have a miracle, walking miracle right here. Sharon. He was with Sharon in the hospital. When they told the family, there's really no hope. He is with us as we sit vigil at the bedside of a loved one. He is with us as, 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 um, as we struggle and don't know which end is up and don't know which way to turn. He is with us giving us his strength, giving his, us his guidance, his wisdom, reminding us of his promises, the still small voice of God speaking to us. He's reminding us of his promises and he's moving our hearts to turn to him. No matter what you and I do, no matter what we do, good, bad, ugly, God goes through it with us and he understands. He understands our pain and our struggle and our sorrow. How can this be? Because he's been there. <coughs> He came and lived a human life. He came to be one of us. God, divinity, in a manger, in a smelly animal stall. God, with knuckles and knees and toes and eyelashes. God, in the world. He's been there where we have been. He knows the hurt. He knows the fear. He knows our suffering. And remember, Jesus is a no ordinary baby. And so this is a no ordinary story. And this certainly is no ordinary tale that people believe we Christians have, have uh, relied on some kind of a myth. This is history, folks. History. It's recorded. On that first Christmas morning, 
divinity arrived in the world. And though he came completely ordinary, he was also extraordinary. He was divine, human and divine. God had entered the world, and life and the world was never, ever the same. The one who spoke the universe into existence and declared that it was good way back at the beginning is the one who comes and came and says, I am with you. The one who placed the stars in the heavens declares, I have not forgotten you. The one who took his finger and drew in the earth the rivers and the streams says, I have come to seek and save the lost. The one who gave up his royal throne for a manger. The one who gave up the angels singing a heavenly chorus to come and hear Crucify him, crucify him. We have no king but Caesar. This is the king of our lives. This is no extraordinary baby. This is our God. This is our Lord, and this is our Savior. He says, I have come to bring you back to my heart. I have come so that you will know my love for you. A love that went to the cross. A love that is eternal. A love that opens heaven's gates for you and me. This is the God we worship. This is the God we sing hallelujah to. This common, ordinary story is really not common and ordinary at all. God came in a common way to do an extraordinary thing, and that is to bring us back to his heart. And so may you enjoy this Christmas. May you know the love of Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior. May you know that God is Emmanuel, always with you, never leaving you, always there to celebrate with you, to hold you, and to love you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Heavenly Father, as we come to you this day, this is not an ordinary night. This is a night filled with hallelujahs, filled with the angels' chorus of singing, filled with celebrations throughout the world. Wherever your name is known, the steeple bells are ringing, the strings are stringing, the choirs are singing. People are praising you and giving you the glory, pointing to you and saying, thank you, Lord, for this indescribable gift. And so we come to you, Lord, this night, and it is not a, a common night. Although 2,000 years ago, it just seemed like an ordinary night, a quiet, sleepy night. But in that night, the heavens opened and the angels announced that you were born. And then there were the shepherds, the shepherds, the sleepy shepherds wondering if they may be, you know, crazy. And then they hear the angel and, and then they trust. And they go to Bethlehem to see this thing that had been done. And when they were there, Lord, they were amazed. Because it was just as they had been told. They were amazed at your love. Because you placed your son in the manger. So amazed were the shepherds <coughs> that they went and told. May we, Lord, be people so amazed at your love, so amazed at your presence in our lives, so, so overjoyed 
that we not only sing hallelujahs, but that we go and tell of your greatness. We go and tell of your love. We go and tell that you are here to heal the broken, to bind up the wounds of those who are hurting, to be a salve to the pain and suffering. Heavenly Father, for those who do not know you, let us be your voice, like the shepherds, telling of what we see, what we have seen and heard. Let us not keep the message to ourselves. Heavenly Father, as we celebrate this night, would you help us to remember the reason for all of this commotion, <coughs> all of this tinsel and glitz and glamour, for all that has happened, in the last days and weeks, it's because of love. Your love for us, your love that went to the cross, opened arms wide and said, this is how much I love you. And you took the nail blows in your hands and your feet. And that wasn't the end of the story. You went to the tomb, the cold dark tomb, that's not the end of the story either. You opened the way for us to life, life everlasting for your death, for out of your death came life. And that's not the end. We have life everlasting. As you sit at the right hand of the Father in heaven, you promise to come again. That will be the glorious day. But until then, we will raise our voices with all those who have gone before us and all those who <coughs> will come after us, we will raise our voices in hallelujahs and praise, for you are King of kings and Lord of lords. For those who are ill or hospitalized, Lord, make yourself known. For those who are sitting vigil in the hospitals and nursing homes right now, make yourself known. Be God with them. For those who are living broken and painful lives, Make yourself known. Whisper into the ear of those who are losing hope. Help us all to look heavenly, to see that you are our God and our Lord. Heavenly Father, for those who are, are struggling out uh, in the fires on the West Coast, preparing their lives in, in the Southeast, and for those who have lost their their loved ones in the tsunami, we just lift these, these burdens up to you and ask that you would make yourself known to these your servants, to these your people, to these your creations. We pray, Lord, that you would bless our ministry, that as we strive to love you and care for you and reach out to you, that we would make you known for those who are here and maybe unsure of who you are, Lord, bring them a confidence in their, in their heart, deep down in their soul, that you are passionate about them. For those of us who are here and we're just kind of lazy about our, our faith journey, Lord, inspire us. Move us along in that journey of faith to worship you and praise you. Let none of us be apathetic about what you have done and what you continue to do. For you are Emmanuel, God with us. For that we praise you and give you the glory this night and always. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.